right, all right, all right. What's going on out there, everybody? Hope everybody's staying empowered and staying motivated. Welcome to another edition of Solomon's Soul. I got the pleasure here of speaking with these two fine gentlemen, Mike and Stace. They're the owners of this wonderful business that you guys see on the table, Dope Coffee. They've been doing it for a long time, and I'm just thankful for the chance to talk to them. How are you guys doing today, man? Good, bro. Good, man. I said, let me shake your hands, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Shaking yes, these successful man's hands. <laughs> Appreciate you. But, um, but no, man, I'm, I'm just here to talk to you guys about uh, the business that you guys have put in place, the impact that it's had on the community, but more importantly, how you guys got to the position to be able to do what you guys have done for not only yourselves, but for others. And I feel like with all good stories, we always have to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I do want to ask you guys, you guys uh, both hail from Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina. Could you guys tell us a little bit about what life was like for you guys growing up there? Mm -hmm. And just uh, some things about Winston-Salem that we just wouldn't know. I'll start. Go ahead, go ahead. Since, <laughs> since I'm the older cousin, <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Um, no, man, like you said, we grew up we grew up in Winston-Salem in the 80s, right? So we 80s babies. And uh, I was listening to y'all talk about, I was listening to you talk about Winston a little bit earlier. And it was, it actually started bringing back some memories of what life was like um, in North Carolina, in the South, right? And, and in Winston-Salem, man. We from a community of very hardworking people, very proud people, uh, people that really are about getting things done uh, but we're also from a factory town, right? And so that actually has a big impact on us. Um, you know, if you think about the field trips that we took as students, it was to uh, like Haynes Hosiery, which is which is a, a, a fabric, right? Textile um, plant. Uh, we went to Texas Pete, right? Which was the hot sauce company. We went to RJR or Reynolds America now, right? Which is tobacco uh, cigarette manufacturing company, right? And so. If you just think about it, right? So, so anytime you're doing stuff like that, manufacturing and factories, it's high tech, but it's hard work. And I think that's really kind of how you could look at where we're from, right? Hard working people, smart, um, you know, always willing to put food on their own table, always willing to keep their head down. But we're also family, right? So we grew up in the same family, grew up in the church, uh, grew up in a, in a very tight knit community of, of people around you who want to see you do better. So. I enjoy I enjoy where I grew up in Winston Salem, um, and, and such a beautiful family. So I don't know if you want to add. No, no, no. That's that's pretty much it. That sums it up. So you said you guys grew up in a factory town. So I guess my next question would be to you guys. The prospects of success. So I was I don't even say the prospects, but what you guys saw as success then versus what children see now. I'm assuming is probably pretty different. Was there ever a thought in your mind that, you know, I'm not gonna be able to be successful if I don't work in these certain jobs or if I don't do these certain type of things? Like, what was you guys' perception of success at an early age to kind of center around? Yeah, it was, uh, like Mike was saying, it was either you working at Reynolds and you just become the OG at Reynolds and you got the Cadillac now and you just, you an old man and you pulling up in your suit on Sunday. It was either that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was that, and that was, you know what I'm saying? It was either that or you was working at the bank. So it was, it was Wachovia, B, B, uh, what was it? BB&T and, 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 you know, so on and so forth for health or um, healthcare. So that's a big thing. So, you know, Michael Jordan does a lot of the Novart health. That's, a, that's his thing and that was big for us growing up. But then you had, uh, Baptist Hospital and Forsyth Hospital, and that was it. Like a lot of schools in Winston, like focus on uh, the uh, you know healthcare, you know health the the health field. So that was pretty much it, man. That's pretty much it. If you wasn't doing those three things, it wasn't anything else. It's it's industrialized. It's very uh, it's very like you're gonna play these lanes, and that's it. This is how we make our money here. The money is old in Winston. It's yeah. not new, and that's and that's just how it how it went. So like I got, I got a slightly different perspective than that, because. So, when I was a kid, success wasn't a it wasn't a thing that we, I didn't know anybody that was successful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like like, like my father was in prison until I was like 17 years old, and I'm not saying that that was everybody. You know, I might have had a more slightly extreme circumstance but I, bro, like 
for the most part, say you tell me the one thing about this wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know anybody that was successful. Mm -hmm. that was a, wasn't a thing. It was a it was a person or two that may have had some success. Um, and I'm saying that because, you know, I remember sitting around, I got a I got an older cousin, uh, Octavius, and we would have these conversations, man, and we would just he he would always he would always ask us questions like, What are we gonna do? <laughs> you right. see you laughing that's, real. that's, real. that's, real. that's, that's real. every day bro every day <laughs> what, we gonna do? what are we gonna do bro? <laughs> like and i remember it was like as i kept getting older and older i was like yo like what are we gonna do because everybody was i mean you gotta keep it real it was the 80s and 90s so yeah. like dope dealing was real the name of this company not dope coffee just because we think it's a cool word is definitely intertwined in our families story right good or bad it's, it's intertwined in our communities good or bad you know it's, it's a real thing from multiple perspectives not just from the negative but also from the good side so when you say you know what was the idea of, of success and shit man i'm gonna be honest bro like i was like 21 22 years old when i started grasping with the fact that mm -hmm. like yo i I gotta like get my mindset into like the world that we live in because you gotta end up doing something and it just yeah. that stuff wasn't on the table like nothing it was on the table yeah. wasn't yeah. on the table bro that's what I was gonna say like but even if it was like that like that was the reality of it um we knew at early at a very early age that this wasn't gonna be us yeah it's very right. like I think man it was uh that generation that that eighties going into the 90s, like being able to live that and see like, okay, technology picking up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We haven't, we just experiencing new things. We knew at an early age, like, yeah, we're, we're not gonna be able to do this. This is not what success is gonna be. So everybody hit the ground running, you know, doing different things. No, it wasn't never a, um, a closed mindset. Um, it was just like, all right, let's do something. How are we gonna innovate? everything that we do like you said like mike said what we gonna do i felt fortunate though because i got a sports scholarship mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying give up that um because you know it's the funny thing about it's how y'all talk about how you know just the title dope itself is tied in everything but a lot of what y'all did just no pun intended was dope in its own way in a positive sense you know how did you end up getting an opportunity to go to college wait for it i'm assuming it was on sports but could you talk a little bit about what made you choose a Wake Forest in comparison to maybe like an NC State or a school like that? I didn't choose Wake Forest. I left. I went to the University of Florida my freshman year. Oh. I was gone. And if life would have been a little cheaper, I would have stayed gone. Word. But then it was just, uh, you know, when you were a kid, you know, because I did, I wanted to be a real good athlete. And so I was kind of kind of like the conversation we had earlier. I was looking at the top rankings. I was like, Florida, Florida. And, uh, <laughs> So I went down to Florida, and it's cool. You got you could have a full scholarship, man. They can pay for everything related to school, and then you start realizing, oh shit, like I still have to live in the actual life part of this thing. Where yeah. you know, if you want to have your license and some insurance, well, that costs, and that's not paid as a part of like going to school. And and that's the smallest example that I could that I could give. Um, I just found I, I ended up coming back to Wake though, just because it was uh, I had some conflicts with my coach and. And I went through this thing where I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. And so, wait, just looked like a good choice. And it was good because I could come back home. Man. So, Stace, while, while he was doing his thing at Wake, I know you were just doing your thing in Winston. You know, what was in, what was your mindset while your cousin was in college at Winston? Was it, was it just, I'm going to continue to just learn about life, working jobs? Like, what were you thinking? Well, I was, yeah, I'm young. Yeah, I was you still young. I was still in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was still, like, in high school. But I was already making music, um, thanks to Mike, uh, running around, making sure that, you know, once I get out of school, I'm running over there to the, to the campus. He had the booth set up, and any chance I got, I'm already, like, just dialed into it. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already, like, I, I, I enjoyed, um, being over over there with him over the weekend and then having my little CD that I get to bring back to school. Oh, the only, the only man, cat man. with a CD. It was like, ah, that's, my, that's, that's <laughs> me right there. Let that rotate around the school. That's That that was me. That was my high school experience. So I was the rapper. 
How did uh how did the title Spanish? I think I'm pronouncing it right. How did Spanish come to be? Creative Michael Rapper, Shakespeare. How did Spanish yeah. come to be? That's so so that's kind of a byproduct of you know that story. You jump the you you jump all the way up to to that where we're at now, like reconnecting in Atlanta. But Spanish is that growing process from what you the question that you just asked to that day when Spinach was created, you know what I mean? And that was a, that was a collaboration, uh, me and Mike. Um, so that's that's my side of it. I say like, hey, I wanna do uh, projects again. Um, what we gonna do? You know what I mean? Hey, Mike, what we gonna do? Right, look, I got what, this, here you go. What is it? But I'm gonna give you more credit than that. <laughs> it was, uh, but see, we have to back up a little bit. And I yeah, know where you're getting at. Uh -huh. See, the, what Stace isn't saying is, see, you gotta understand, we made hundreds of summers. Okay, we made, we made. You gotta understand, this is 2001. Yeah. No, 2003. Excuse me. 2003, when like nobody's the only people making music at the time. You're going to it. You're here in Atlanta. Okay. No one made music. There's probably two artists out in Winston, like hip hop, yeah, that yeah. made music. And it was like older people. Yeah, it was in their thirties. Yeah, these yeah. cats was in their thirties. These, these were like cats that would be around. Uh, what's my man used to make the beats for Ho? Uh, Snow. Uh, 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 ski, ski beats. Ski beats, not yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, it would be like this crowd that had kind of like trickled down from the north that still had ties back home to like, yeah, like exactly. major recording studios and whatnot. That's, that's so you talking about a couple black kids in a dorm, like we built out a full recording studio, had a digital interface. This is like I said, man, it's in 03. Nobody, nobody had a digital interface. Everybody else you talk to about this thing be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> you just connected to the computer. I'm like, yeah, bro, like a little microphone set up and it was, it was cool. And so we made hundreds and hundreds of songs, independent albums. I'm talking about we spent hours with them blankets up on the walls, yeah, like making music together. Magic, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was, it was crazy. And so, and also, man, you gotta understand. Like to me, um, I was more of an engineer at the time, and that's really how I saw myself in music. And so, what I really wanted is I wanted Stacey to come in and make these songs because I, I really thought he was just a great MC. He was a he's a good MC now, but man. You would have heard Stace at 14 years old, right? You'd have been like, ooh, some heat, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, you kind of fast forward, I had a kid and joined the Marine Corps and like that. So I kind of went this direction where Stace stayed with the hip hop. I remember we tell the story that day, I came over, I gave him all my equipment. I said, hey, bro, this is everything, yeah, yeah. you got it. Uh, and they used it and they kept making music. And so when I left the Marine Corps and got back out, like I was able to run into all of this stuff that Stace had kept doing. And so we started talking about music and hip hop and this and that. Uh, we weren't doing dope coffee yet. Um, and so fast forward, we started the company. We I think we, you know, websites out and stuff mm -hmm. is online and we may have been supplying a store or two here or there. Uh, and I could tell that that, well, you, was, you had just finished this mixtape. Remember the, you did them, it wasn't like you put it yeah, all yeah, out yeah, when yeah, you got like a project yeah. a month. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, or, and, it was, and it was real good and he was like, yo, I got this idea, and this is where I was saying not taking enough credit for it. Um, spinach is a is a three part story because I came over to his house, we sat on the whiteboard, and he was like, "Yo, I want to do a project. It's called Spinach." And I said, "Why? Like, what's you know? Because he wanted me to do something. I need to know the the depth into it, especially especially because he wanted to produce it, and I was going to write the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was that was that was different. That was the idea, yeah. Yeah, that was the idea to do a hip hop. Producer, MC, uh, coming from so think about it, I'm coming out of the MC lane and like no Mike, be the MC. And I'm, I'm going produce. to produce this concept. That's a pivot. Yeah, that's a pivot. yeah, absolutely. And that's what it was for you. It was a yeah, pivot. It was like a, like an official exactly. like let me pivot into the producer world. And mm -hmm. for me, it was like let me come tell a a story to set the foundation of dope coffee up on from a hip hop perspective because mm -hmm. that's what that album is. Um, and I don't know if you know if it's on the back of the bag. If you see me pointing towards it, this green bag, the Ethiopian bag, is the story of uh, the spinach album. So that's the merchandise line. So you get the green bag, the green box, and the green bottle. Oh yeah, and it's actually all on that on that poster on the wall. That's not where it started. Okay, it started with this conversation of yo, yeah. let's just sit here and make some music. And it stays. It was very uh, impactful to me what he said. He said it's got three parts. Okay. Black music, or excuse me, black money, the 
that's part one, that's the cash part, cash, because the second part about it says different. Black wealth, that's a future concept, because if you're thinking about wealth is not for today, and then soulful sounds, and that's like this culture part of us, that's what this album was supposed to embody. Um, at the time, it's like because we, we talked about Black Sheep Accelerator, and, and we were just doing a lot of that stuff, teaching people about the economics of financing a startup business. At the same time, we were making this album, and so if you listen to the album, you're going to notice that, like, yeah, we do talk about our culture, and it is a lot of hip hop, but it's a lot of finance, or at least the story behind the finances of our culture. And that might that might sound deep, and that's why you got to do it as hip hop, because sometimes, like. You know, I get on my soapbox and, and want to start teaching all these different lessons about music, right? Or, or about finance. And it's not always going to be received by everyone yeah, if, you, if, you, if you preach it at them, right? But if you bring it to them in a way it's a green bag with Harriet on the 20, it's already money, right? If you see the original album cover, it's got George Washington on it on a, on a $1 bill with political messages. And it's like, if we if we bring it about that way, then people will understand, I guess, more so like our perspective on it. Like, yo, we're not just doing hip hop anymore just to do it. There's a message. This message is actually the brand foundation for Dope Coffee because if we get those concepts off, like listen, listen to what I just said, black money, black wealth, social yeah. sound. If I execute those three things inside of Dope Coffee, I win in coffee as a business. Why? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the bottom. I'm gonna start with that soulful sound piece. Our culture is it Steve Stout. Steve South said, mm -hmm. hey man, the best way to generate financial capital is through cultural capital. Mm -hmm. Especially for us, right? Because you're not about to go get $5 million to flip into $10 million. That's difficult to get for uh, someone black in the South. And that's not a big flip. Going from five to 10, you're just doubling it, right? What you could do is take nothing, add some music to nothing, and add yourself. some lyrics, and still end up at that same 10 million. That's the thought process behind uh, what spinach and what a dope coffee is. Because, like, man, your average coffee company is starting up on about five to ten million dollars in investment money, just like on day zero before they man. produced or showed anything that's relevant, right? Um, so, yeah, that's 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 dope coffee. That's that spinach album. Uh, I, I want I want to say one thing in the in book. It's important. So for for me and for me that that transitional piece. I'm coming from strictly solely creativity, not really thinking about what the future and what the structure is going to be. So those three parts don't Mike Mike tell them the story head on. Those three parts, those that's where I was at mentally. Like I wasn't I wasn't there, but I was like, okay, but but Mike, I want to strive to get these messages out for myself. Um, I tell Mike all the time, like. Ah, bro, when you when you uh when you talk, when you rap, when you just do anything, um, you you relay a message down to a younger black man like me that's uh going throughout life that really don't have a lot of role models, things like that. I don't really look up to uh the entertainer or the this and the that, like, cause it, it was real life for us, right? So I was like, nah, bro, when you talk, you you put us in the mindset to be three years ahead, you know, four years ahead. So yeah, for I wanted to say that for for me it was a transition to um, that full that full out like nah what does the future look like you know what I'm saying for black men 